Grim Fandango, at Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. Grim Fandango is a graphic adventure computer game released by LucasArts in 1998 and primarily written by Tim Schafer. It is the first adventure game by LucasArts to use three-dimensional graphics overlaid on pre-rendered 2D computer backgrounds. As with other LucasArts adventure games, the player must converse with other characters and examine, collect, and use objects correctly to solve puzzles in the game in order to progress. Grim Fandango's world combines elements of Aztec beliefs of afterlife with style aspects of film noir, including the Maltese Falcon, On the Waterfront, and Casablanca, to create the Land of the Dead, which recently departed souls, represented in the game by Calica-like figures, must travel through before they reach their final destination, the Ninth Underworld. The story follows travel agent Manuel Manny Calavera as he attempts to save Mercedes Meche Calamar, a newly arrived but virtuous soul, during her long journey. The game received positive reviews, which praised its artistic design and overall game direction in particular. Grim Fandango was selected for several gaming awards at the time of release and is often listed in publishers' lists of top games of all time. However, the game has been considered a commercial failure, which partially led LucasArts to terminate their adventure game development, contributing to the decline of the adventure game genre. Image Grim Fandango LucasArts Classics Cover Contents Section 1 Gameplay Section 2 Plot Section 2.1 Setting Section 2.2 Story. Section 3. Development. Section 4. Reception. Section 4.1. Awards. Section 4.2. Sales and Aftermath. Followed by Section 5 and 6. Reserved for references and external links. Section 1. Gameplay. Grim Fandango is an adventure game in which the player controls Manuel Manny Calavera as he follows Mercedes Meche Colomar into the underworld. The game uses the Grim E engine rendering backgrounds in 2D, while the main objects and characters are represented in 3D. The player controls Manny's movements and actions with a keyboard, a joystick, or a gamepad. Manny must collect objects that can be used with either other collectible objects, parts of the scenery, or with other people in the land of the dead in order to solve puzzles and progress in the game. Unlike the earlier 2D LucasArts games, the player is informed of objects or persons of interest not by text floating on the screen when the player passes a cursor over them, but instead by the fact that Manny will turn his head towards that object or person as he walks by. Manny can engage with other characters through conversation trees to gain hints on what needs to be done to solve puzzles or to progress the plot. Like most other LucasArts adventure games, the player cannot ever get into a dead-end situation that would prevent progress forward due to the death of the character or other limitation. Section 2. Plot. Section 2.1. Setting. Grim Fandango takes place in the Land of the Dead, where recently departed souls make their way to the Ninth Underworld. For sinners, this is a four-year journey made on foot and many do not complete it, ending up taking jobs at waypoints along the route. However, more virtuous souls receive assistance, the most virtuous getting passage on the number 9 train, known as the Double N, that cuts the journey down to four minutes. The travel agents of the Department of Death act as the Grim Reaper to escort the souls from the mortal world to the land of the dead, and then determine which mode of transport the soul is merited. Each year, on November 2nd, there is a large festival celebration of the Day of the Dead. The souls in the land of the dead appear as skeletal calica figures. Alongside them are demons that have been summoned to help with the more mundane tasks of day-to-day -day life, such as auto maintenance. The souls themselves can suffer death within death by being sprouted, the result of being shot by sproutella-filled darts that cause flowers to grow out through the bones. Many of the characters are Mexican, and occasional Spanish words are interspersed into the English dialogue, resulting in Spanglish. Many of the characters smoke, which follows a film noir tradition. Image The cast of Grim Fandango 
In front center are Domino, Meche, Manny, and Sal. Gladys is in the upper left, and Hector is on the far right. Section 2.2 Story The game is divided into four acts, each taking place on November 2nd in four consecutive years. Manuel Manny Calavera is a travel agent at the Department of Death in El Mauro, forced into his job to work off a debt to the powers that be. Manny is frustrated with being assigned clients that must take the four-year journey and is threatened to be fired by his boss, Don Copal, if he doesn't come up with better clients. Manny steals a client, Mercedes Meche Calamar, from his co-worker, Domino Hurley. The department computers assign Meche to a four-year journey even though Manny believes that she should have a guaranteed spot on the number nine due to her pureness of heart in life. After setting Meche on her way, Manny investigates further and finds that Domino and Don have been rigging the system to deny many clients double-end tickets, hoarding them for the boss of the criminal underworld, Hector Lamans. He then sells them at an exorbitant price to those that can afford it. Manny recognizes that he cannot stop Hector presently and instead, with the help of his driver and speed demon Gladys, he tries to find Meche through her journey in the nearby petrified forest. During the trip, Manny encounters Salvador Sal Limones, the leader of the Small Lost Souls Alliance, LSA, who is aware of Hector's plans and recruits Manny to help. Manny arrives at the small port city of Rubacava and finds that he has beaten her there and waits for her to show up. A year passes and the city of Rubacava has grown. Manny is now running his own nightclub near the edge of the forest. Manny learns from Olivia Alfreda that Don has been sprouted for letting the scandal be known and that Meche was recently seen with Domino leaving the port. Manny gives chase and a year later tracks them to the edge of the world. Domino has been holding Meche there as a trap to lure Manny in in order to get rid of both of them, all to keep Hector's scandal quiet. Manny defeats Domino and, with Meche and Gladys, escapes from the edge of the world. The three travel for another year until they reach the terminus for the number 9 train before the ninth Underworld. However, Gladys has fallen deathly ill. Manny learns from demons stationed at the Terminus that the only way to revive Gladys is to travel at high speeds to restore Gladys's purpose for being summoned. Manny and the others devise a makeshift fuel source to create a rocket train cart, quickly taking Manny and Meche back to Rubacava and saving Gladys's life. The three return to El Mero, now found to be fully in Hector's control and renamed as Nuevo Mero. Manny regroups with Sal and his expanded LSA, and with the help of Olivia, he is able to learn about Hector's current activities. Further investigation reveals that Hector not only has been hoarding the number nine tickets, but has created counterfeit versions that he has sold to others. Manny tries to confront Hector, but he is lured into another trap by Olivia, who has also captured Sal and is taken to Hector's greenhouse to be sprouted. Manny is able to defeat Hector and Sal sacrifices himself to prevent Olivia from interfering. Manny and Meche are able to find the real double end tickets, including the one that Meche should have received. Manny makes sure the rest of the tickets are given to their rightful owners. In turn, he is granted his own for his good deeds. Together, Manny and Meche board the number nine for their happy journey into the ninth underworld. Section 3. Development. Grim Fandango was designed by Tim Schaefer, co-designer of Day of the Tentacle and creator of Full Throttle and the more recent Psychonauts. Schaefer had begun work on the game soon after completing Full Throttle in mid-1995. Grim Fandango was an attempt by LucasArts to rejuvenate the graphic adventure genre in decline by 1998. It was the first LucasArts adventure since Labyrinth not to use the Scum engine, instead using the Sith engine, pioneered by Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2, as the basis of the new Grim E engine. The Grim E engine was built using the scripting language Lua, in part due to LucasArts programmer Brett Mogilevsky, and is considered to be one of the first applications of the language in gaming applications. The game's success led to the language's use in many other games and applications, including Escape from Monkey Island and Baldur's Gate. Grim Fandango mixed static pre-rendered background images with 3D characters and objects. Part of this decision was based on how the Calica figures would appear in three dimensions. 
There were more than 90 sets and 50 characters in the game to be created and rendered. Manny's character alone comprised 250 polygons. The development team found that by utilizing three-dimensional models to pre-render the backgrounds, they could alter the camera shot to achieve more effective or dramatic angles for certain scenes simply by re-rendering the background instead of having to have an artist redraw the background for a traditional 2D adventure game. The team adapted the engine to allow Manny's head to move separately from his body to make the player aware of important objects nearby. The 3D engine also aided in the choreography between the spoken dialogue and body and arm movements of the characters. Additionally, full motion video cutscenes were incorporated to advance the plot, using the same in-game style for the characters and backgrounds to make them nearly indistinguishable from the actual game. Image Manny's Office, from Peter Chan's original concept art, top, to wireframe mesh, middle, to in-game representation, bottom. The game combined several Aztec beliefs of the afterlife and underworld with 1930s Art Deco design motifs and a dark plot reminiscent of the film noir genre. The Aztec motifs of the game were influenced by Schaefer's decade-long fascination with folklore and talks with folklorist Alan Dundas, with Schaefer recognizing that the four-year journey of the soul in the afterlife would set the stage for an adventure game. Schaefer stated that once he had set on the afterlife setting, quote, Then I thought, what role would a person want to play in a Day of the Dead scenario? You'd want to be the Grim Reaper himself. That's how Manny got his job. Then I imagined him picking up people on the land of the living and bringing them to the land of the dead, like he's really just a glorified limo or taxi driver. So the idea came of Manny having this really mundane job that looks glamorous because he has the robe and a scythe, but really he's just punching the clock, end quote. The division of the game into four years was a way of breaking the game's overall puzzle into four discrete sections. Several film noir movies were inspiration for much of the game's plot and characters. Tim Schafer stated that the true inspiration was drawn from films like Double Indemnity, in which a weak and undistinguished insurance salesman finds himself entangled in a murder plot. The design and early plot are fashioned after films such as Chinatown and Glengarry Glen Ross. Several scenes in Grim Fandango are directly inspired by the genre's films such as The Maltese Falcon, The Third Man, Key Largo, and most notably Casablanca. Two characters in the game's second act are directly modeled after the roles played by Peter Lorre and Claude Rains in the film. The main villain, Hector Le Mans, was designed to resemble Sidney Greenstreet's character of Signor Ferrari from Casablanca. Visually, the game drew inspiration from various sources. The skeletal character designs were based largely on the calico figures used in the Mexican Day of the Dead festivities, while the architecture ranged from Art Deco skyscrapers to an Aztec temple. The team turned to LucasArts artist Peter Chan to create the calico figures, while Ed Big Daddy Roth was used for the designs of the hot rods and the demon characters like Glottis. The game featured a large cast for voice acting in the game's dialogue and cutscenes, employing many Latino actors to help with the Spanish slang. Voice actors included Tony Plana as Manny, Maria Canals as Meche, Alan Blumenfield as Gladys, and Jim Ward as Hector. The game's music, a mix of an orchestral score, South American folk music, jazz, swing, and big band sounds, was composed at LucasArts by Peter McConnell and inspired by the likes of Duke Ellington and Benny Goodman as well as film composers Max Steiner and Adolf Deutsch. The score featured live musicians that McConnell knew or made contact with in San Francisco's Mission District, including a mariachi band. The soundtrack was released as a CD in 1998. Originally, the game was to be shipped in the first half of 1998, but was delayed. As a result, the game was released on the Friday before November 2, 1998, a few days before the actual Day of the Dead celebration. Tim Schafer left LucasArts shortly after Grim Fandango's release and created his own company, Double Fine Productions, in 2000, along with many of those involved with the development of Grim Fandango. The company has found similar critical success with their first title, Psychonauts. 
Schaefer has stated that while there is a strong interest from fans and that he, quote, would love to go back and spend time with the characters from any game he's worked on, end quote, a sequel to Grim Fandango or his other previous games is unlikely as, quote, I also want to make something new, end quote. Section 4. Reception Grim Fandango received almost uniformly positive reviews. Critics lauded the art direction in particular, with GameSpot rating the visual design as, quote, consistently great, end quote. PC Zone emphasized the production as a whole, calling the direction, costumes, characters, music, and atmosphere expertly done. They also commented the game would make a superb film. The San Francisco Chronicle stated, quote, Grim Fandango feels like a wild dance through a cartoonish film noir adventure. Its wacky characters, seductive puzzle-filled plot, and a nearly invisible interface allow the player to lose themselves in the game just as cinema-goers might get lost in a movie, end quote. The Houston Chronicle, in naming Grim Fandango the best game of 1998 along with Half-Life, complimented the graphics calling them, quote, jaw-dropping, end quote, and commented that the game, quote, is full of both dark and light humor, end quote. IGN summed up its review by saying the game was the, quote, best adventure game, end quote, that they had ever seen. The game also received criticisms from the media. Several reviewers noted that there were difficulties experienced with the interface requiring a certain learning curve to get used to, and selected camera angles for some puzzles were poorly chosen. The use of elevators in the game was particularly noted as troublesome. The review from Adventure Gamers expressed dislike of the soundtrack and, at times, quote, found it too heavy and not well suited to the game's theme, end quote. A computer and video games review also noted that the game had continuous and long data loading from the CD-ROM that interrupted the game and, quote, spoils the fluidity of some sequences and causes niggling delays, end quote. The following is an info box of reviews from various publications and scores. Adventure Games, 4.5 out of 5. Game Revolution, A-. GameSpot, 9.3 out of 10. IGN, 9.4 out of 10. PC Zone, 9.0 out of 10. The info box continues with compilations of multiple reviews. Metacritic, 94 out of 100. Game Rankings, 93%. Section 4.1. Awards. Grim Fandango won several awards after its release in 1998. PC Gamer selected the game as the 1998 Adventure Game of the Year. The game won IGN's Best Adventure Game of the Year in 1998, while GameSpot awarded it their Best of E3 1998. PC Adventure Game of the Year... PC Game of the Year, Best PC Graphics for Artistic Design, and Best PC Music Awards. In the following year, GameSpot included the game in their 10 Best PC Game Soundtracks and was selected as the 10th Best PC Ending by their readership. In 1999, Grim Fandango won Computer Adventure Game of the Year for the 1999 Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences Annual Interactive Achievement Awards. It was also nominated for Game of the Year, Outstanding Achievement in Arts and Graphics, Outstanding Achievement in Character or Story Development, and Outstanding Achievement in Sound and Music that same year. Grim Fandango has been included in several publishers' top games list well after its release. GameSpot inducted the game into their greatest games of all time in 2003, citing, quote, Ask just about anyone who has played Grim Fandango, and he or she will agree that it's one of the greatest games of all time, end quote. GameSpy also added the game to their Hall of Fame in 2004, further describing it as the seventh most underrated game of all time as of 2003. Adventure Gamers listed Grim Fandango as the seventh top adventure game of all time in 2004. In 2007, IGN included the game in the top 25 PC games as 15th and top 100 games of all time at 36th, citing that LucasArts' second-to-last stab at the classic adventure genre 
may very well be the most original and brilliant one ever made. Section 4.2 Sales and Aftermath Grim Fandango's sales were poor despite the positive reception given to the game. Initial estimates suggested that the game sold well during the 1998 holiday season. However, the game only sold about 95,000 copies up through 2003 in North America, excluding online sales based on data provided by PC Data, now owned by NPD Group. Total cumulative worldwide sales are estimated between 100,000 and 500,000 units. The game is commonly considered as a commercial failure, even though LucasArts has stated that, quote, Grim Fandango met domestic expectations and exceeded them worldwide, end quote. While LucasArts proceeded to produce Escape from Monkey Island in 2000, they canceled development of sequels to Sam and Max Hit the Road and Full Throttle, stating that, quote, after careful evaluation of current marketplace realities and underlying economic considerations, we've decided that it was not the appropriate time to launch a graphic adventure on the PC, end quote. Subsequently, the studio dismissed many of the people involved with their adventure games, some of whom have since gone to create Telltale games, creating an episodic series of the Sam and Max games. In 2006, LucasArts stated that they do not plan on returning to adventure games until the, quote, next decade, end quote. These events, along with the other changes in the video game market towards action-based games, are seen as primary causes in the decline of the adventure game genre. Despite this, Grim Fandango has been the centerpiece of a large fan community for the game that has continued to be active nearly 10 years after the game's release. Such fan communities include the Grim Fandango Network and the Department of Death, both of which include fan art and fiction in addition to other original content. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at www.gnu.org backslash copyleft backslash fdl.html.